My name is Matt Carlson. I'm a neurotologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, specializing in treatment of conditions of the ear, facial nerve, and lateral skull base involving hearing loss, ear infections, facial paralysis, and also tumors of the side of the skull between the ear and brain. One common surgery performed at the Mayo Clinic is cochlear implantation for the treatment of advanced hearing loss, and this is the topic that I'm going to review with you. Hearing loss is a very common condition that affects a large number of children and adults alike. Broadly, there are two types of hearing loss, conductive hearing loss and sensorineural hearing loss. The severity and the type of hearing loss can be determined by a hearing test called an audiogram. Conductive hearing loss can cause it, be caused by a number of conditions that result in blocking of sound waves from the external ear all the way to the inner ear called the cochlea. This can include infections, fluid in the ear, earwax, eardrum perforation, among many other conditions. The second type of hearing loss is called sensory neural hearing loss or nerve deafness or nerve hearing loss. And this is the main area of discussion. There are a number of conditions that can cause sensory neural hearing loss. Young children may be born with advanced sensory neural hearing loss or adults may develop progressive hearing loss from age related changes, the history of loud noise exposure, or a family history of hearing loss among many other causes. The treatment of sensory neural hearing loss is largely determined by the degree of hearing loss from mild to profound as well as whether or not it affects one or both ears. As you might imagine, someone with significant hearing loss in both ears would be significantly more impaired than somebody with hearing loss in one ear. Initially, some people may elect to simply observe their condition, particularly if they have mild hearing loss only affecting one ear. However, as hearing loss becomes more severe, and particularly if it involves both ears, most patients will elect to um, receive a, a hearing aid. In most cases, a hearing aid is very effective at bringing up hearing levels to provide function for the patient. However, when hearing loss reaches a more advanced level, some patients will reach a point where they feel their hearing aid is no longer providing enough benefit. This is particularly true for patients who are involved in more noisy environments at meetings, conferences, social outings, and social events where there are multiple people talking there's a lot of background noise. This is the population of people that may benefit from a cochlear implant. So what is a cochlear implant and how does it work? A cochlear implant is a small surgically implanted device. Nearly all causes of sensory neural hearing loss result in loss of inner ear hair cells within the cochlea, also called the organ of hearing. Sound waves travel into the cochlea and produce fluid waves that move hair cells, much like seaweed moves in the waves in the ocean. The movement of these hair cells creates a small electrical current that travels along the hearing nerve to the brain, which gives the perception of sound. A cochlear implant serves to bypass non-functioning hair cells. Cochlear implantation involves a relatively short, low-risk surgical procedure where a small incision is made behind the ear. The device is then placed underneath the scalp. A small amount of bone located behind the ear called the mastoid is then drilled. This bone has no function and merely holds space. By removing this bone, we are able to see the cochlea. Under high power magnification from an operating microscope, a small opening in the cochlea is made and a very small group of wires are placed inside the cochlea. This small wire delivers very, delivers very small levels of electrical current or energy that provides just enough energy to awaken the nerve endings of the cochlear nerve and pro provides sound once again to the patient. This procedure generally takes about 60 to 90 minutes and the patient is able to leave the hospital the same day in the great majority of cases. Approximately two to three weeks following surgery, the device is turned on. Initially, in most cases, the patient is able to hear many sounds that they haven't heard in a long time and perhaps never heard, perhaps uh, sounds like birds chirping or the quiet sound of the engine humming or other soft or quiet sounds. However, generally the ability to understand speech requires several sessions of device programming where the patient becomes more accustomed to the sound. At the Mayo Clinic we have a large cochlear implant team comprised of the cochlear implant surgeons, audiologists, audiology technicians, speech and language pathologists, among many others. In my biased opinion, cochlear implantation represents one of the greatest inventions in all of medicine within the last century. It's the only human sense that we can reliably restore in most patients. I hope this short video addresses some of your preliminary questions regarding cochlear implantation. If you have hearing loss and are still having significant difficulty despite using hearing aids, I would encourage you to discuss the possibility of cochlear implantation with your physician. And of course, if you are interested in pursuing a cochlear implant, we'd be very honored to visit with you.